What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make gold pendants for your jewelry business. We're going to go over the entire process from start to finish. Let's begin. All right guys, so the first thing we're going to do is go on cgtrader.com. This is where we're going to get our 3D files. So I downloaded this file right here, which is line pendant. You guys can see it right here. But the problem is when we actually open up this file, and we take a look at the back, the 3D designer, he didn't finish the file. He left the back empty. So we can't make jewelry like this. So when you guys are making pendants that are bulky, we have three ways we can make them. The first way is we can make it fully solid. The problem with this is the piece is going to be very heavy. The second choice is we can add a gallery. And the third choice is that we can make a solid gallery, which will make the piece look like it's solid, but really is going to be hollow. So I emailed the original designer. He didn't respond. So I messaged the designer I usually work with and told him to fix the file. Now when you guys contact these 3D designers, make sure you guys use very simple basic English. You don't have to use proper grammar because a lot of them are international. So you want to make it as easy as possible for them. So this is what I wrote to him right here. I sent him the original file I downloaded. And these are the 3D renders of the piece he made. So let's take a look. Let's click here. So as you guys can see, he made the gallery. Let's click on the next picture. And right here, you guys can see he made three holes and three pins. Now, this is very important to do because this is going to make sure the gallery is going to fit straight onto the piece. Also, this will save your bench jeweler a lot of time. Now, a lot of you guys ask me how to resize a file in Rhino 3D, and it's super easy. All you do is select the file, click on Transform, Scale, Scale 3D, click one time, click a second time, let go, and just drag it. Once you have the size you wanted, you click one more time, and it's resized. So the 3D designer sent us back the files. Here we have the main piece right here, you guys can see. We have the gallery right here, and we have the bail for the chain. The next step is to open up the Cheeto Box app and to import these three files and to 3D print them with castable resin. So let's do that. Let's import this one. Let's import the gallery. And let's import the bail. All right, let's move this around a little bit. Now, let me show you guys how to resize in the Cheeto Box app. So I want to make this pendant a little bit smaller. This is how you do it. Let's click on the first file. We're going to click on this magnifying glass right here, and we're simply going to change the percentage. Let's say we wanted 80% of this size. We're going to change it to 80, and we're going to do this with all three files to make sure everything is equal. Click on this one, and we're going to change this to 80%. And now let's do the bell. Change this to 80% as well. And now everything is equally resized. And that's how you guys resize in the Cheeto Box app. It's very simple. Now what we're going to do with this bell right here, we're going to rotate it, and we're going to add supports to all three files. And now we're going to do our gallery. Now let's flip our gallery over to make sure the supports are going to be on the same side as the pins. Just like that. So we have all the supports ready. The next step is to print. Now we're going to click slice. We're going to make the 3D file, save it, import it to our USB drive. And the next step is to print the 3D wax. All right, guys. So now we're going to pour in the castable resin. This is the power resins burn. You guys can get a sample bottle for around $100 and a full size bottle costs around $300. Basically, each wax will cost around $3 to print. The Elegu Mars 3D printer costs around $200 on Amazon, and there's a link in the description. It's going to take the machine a few hours to print the waxes. You can also print multiple wax at once. All right, now the machine is done printing. We're going to take the lid off. We're going to unscrew the plate. Flip it over. And here you guys can see how the machine printed the wax. Now, just so you guys know, I added one more wax, which is a Cuban link, which is not a part of this piece. The next step is to take the plastic tool that comes with the machine and slowly pop off the waxes into a cup of alcohol. We're going to let the waxes sit in the alcohol for about a minute. And after this, you will have to cure the pieces with a UV light for a couple of minutes, or you can leave it on the sun for about half an hour. Once the wax is fully cured, you guys are going to take the clippers that came with the Mars printer, and you're going to carefully clip the supports. Make sure you guys don't pull on the supports because if you do, that's going to leave holes in your piece and that's going to be extra work for your polisher so you don't want to do that. It's better to leave a small piece of the support there and then sand it down instead of having a hole. You guys should be very careful when you're clipping areas that are highly detailed like the crown. Now we're going to clip the bail and after that we're done. The next step is to take these waxes to the caster and cast them into gold. Most major cities in America have a jewelry district. You will have to go down there and find a caster. You will tell the caster what carat gold you want to cast in, either 10 carat, 14 carat, or 18 carat, and also you will tell them what color you want to cast in. Yellow gold, white gold, or rose gold. You should be paying $1.50 per gram on top of the spot price. If you won't be able to pick up your piece the next day for whatever reason, make sure you call the caster and lock in your price. If the price of gold goes up the next day, they're going to take advantage of you, so you don't want that. Alright guys, so the next step is we're going to pick up our casted piece, 
The first thing we're going to do is inspect for any defects or porosity. If you see anything, show the caster and they're gonna fix it. Now, as you guys can see, the piece is gonna look rough. It's not gonna look polished. That's fine, that's how it's supposed to be. The next step is to weigh the piece and write down how much it weighs. So we're going to put all three parts on the scale. And as you guys can see, the total is 15.8 grams. Now, pendants like these are perfect to make when you guys are starting out, but what you want to do is you want to tell the 3D designer to make the wall much, much thinner. Because when you guys are starting out, you might be on a budget, you might only have $1,000, the resin is going to cost you around $100, and then you'll have $700 left over, so you want to make light pieces. You want to have a piece like this weigh under 5 grams. Alright guys, the next step is we're going to take our piece of the polisher, he's going to file everything, sand everything down, polish everything, and he's also going to weld everything together. Usually, we would pay around $20 to polish this type of piece, but because there's more work, you have to solder everything together, we're going to pay around $30. And this is what our piece is going to look like once it's finished. Now the next and most important step is you guys have to obviously weigh everything, see how much the new piece weighs, and after this you're going to take professional photos and a professional video. Building up your product catalog is the most important part of this business. Alright guys, so the majority of the pieces that I make for these YouTube videos, I'm going to take them back to the jewelry district afterwards and I'm going to scrap them. Most places in the jewelry district will buy your pieces for around $1 under spot. Now it's a good thing that I'm going to do this because this piece came out horrible. If I made this piece to sell, this piece would never leave the polisher. Look at how the gallery was not even perfectly soldered. There's holes between the gallery and the main piece. Look at these holes in the gallery. This is completely unacceptable. If this happens to you, you take the piece back to the polisher and make sure he fixes all of this. Do not accept the piece until all of these flaws are fixed. This is why I always tell you guys that it's very important to try out different polishers. Some will take pride in their work and some will half-ass it and give you garbage. Alright guys, the next step is to add a logo to our piece. So there's two ways to make a logo for your jewelry piece. The first way is to have a 3D designer make it in the 3D file. Then when the wax is printed, the logo is going to be on there. This is the way to go if you're making silver jewelry or if you're making light pieces like I mentioned earlier. And the second way to add a logo to your piece is to have it lasered. This costs around $10. So some of you guys ask me where you can get a logo made for your jewelry brand. Honestly, I wouldn't even worry about that right now. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is for you guys to build your inventory and get used to the process of making jewelry. Once you have that going, you can go to Fiverr.com and have somebody make your logo there. Or you can go to iStock Images and get a logo there. Alright, so we're going to go on the website called iStockPhoto.com and we're going to type in diamond logo. Hit search. So for example, if you guys want something like this, you would simply email the seller and tell him to make one with your brand name on it. Let's scroll down. So there's 90 pages of this. Let's click on the next page. So on this website, you guys can buy licenses. It will cost you around $10. So you will simply pay once and then you can download an image like this, go to any font site, get a custom font and put your brand name on the bottom right here. Also, you guys can get completely custom designs done, something like this right here, a diamond with a line inside. You would simply contact the seller and tell them exactly what you need done. Now, some of you guys also ask me what you should name your brand. Honestly, you can name your brand whatever you want. The only thing you have to watch out for is trademarks. So we're going to go on USPTO.gov. This is the US Patent and Trademark Office. We're going to click on Trademarks. We're going to click on the TESS. We're going to click on the Word and Design Mark Search. Now, let's use Icebox Jewelry as an example. We're going to type in Icebox. Hit search. Right here you guys can see if the trademark is active or not. Let's click on the first one right here. So as you guys can see Icebox Jewelry has a trademark. This means that you cannot name your company The Icebox or Icebox & Co. That's taken. If you do that, you're going to get hit with a trademark infringement. So be very careful when you name your company. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.